to the mark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you, if you had to mind, what would you want to learn? What could you learn? Always have a choice, yes. We always have a choice of our state of mind. It's just that when I start to talk about consistent peace, not this kind of roller coaster ride of sometimes peace, sometimes sad, sometimes peace, sometimes angry. You know, that's that's the vacillation between two thought systems, uh, ego and spirit. And and what I'm talking about is enlightenment or self realization. Know thyself. And that self is is not so much coming at the end of, of the life, at the end of the journey, but it's prior to time. Like uh, there was a, a German philosopher named Immanuel Kant, and and I love it, these philosophers, when they start to ask really good, deep questions. And here's this German philosopher who basically never left his, his town uh, over in, in Germany, lived in pretty much the same town his whole life. And he had the audacity to ask the question, this is a great philosopher question, how do we know what we know? Isn't that an interesting question? How do we know what we know? Do we know it through our five senses? Do we know it through learning? You know, that's what we would have, teachers would have us believe. We, we know what we know based on what we learn. Somehow like we're some blank little slate of nothingness and then we learn and learn and learn and accumulate all this stuff and, and words and numbers and memories and everything and then we finally know something. Of course, we see lots of examples throughout history of people who have had lots of education. Hitler had a lot of education. Mussolini had a lot of education. Education is described and has been described for decades as the answer to the world's problems. It hasn't worked. In case anybody hasn't noticed, uh, we've had a lot of decades of improved education and universities, higher learning. Did it eradicate anything? Or take a look at your TV television set. If you think education has actually served anything, it takes an awakened mind to kind of have a perspective on this. Jesus Christ is a pretty good. Uh, wise counselor, and Jesus says, again, you have learned this world. You have overlearned. You have overlearned an impossible lesson. You have overlearned the lesson of separation. And you keep at it. You know, for most people, if somebody says, I'm going to go to that wall, and I'm going to bang my head in my skull, I'm going to poke a hole, that wall over there with my skull. So he say, don't think that's very wise. Uh, and so he went over there and started bashing, bashing, bashing. <laughs> Chances are the skull is going to crack and break before that wall is going to break. Well this is kind of what Jesus is saying. You have overlearned an impossible lesson. You have taught yourself that you're separate from God. And you keep up. It's like a perpetual attempt at nothing. If you were a school teacher, if you were a school teacher and you had a student, a child who was a student, and as a teacher you gave your child an impossible learning goal, an impossible learning goal, what would you call that? I would call that cruel. To give a child an impossible learning goal, a goal that could never be accomplished, ever. That would be a cruel, sick joke. Uh, you know, and not really a funny joke at all. It would be, it would be cruel to give a child an impossible learning goal. Because why? It would ensure learning failure. If the child kept trying to learn that goal and never succeeding, well the ego is an impossible learning goal. It is a goal of separation. This world is a reflection of that belief in separation. And when you continue to try to, to learn an impossible goal in your mind, you will experience fatigue, sadness, depression, never peace of mind. You can never have peace of mind with an impossible learning goal. So you see, we have to take it much
much deeper than the, the Spanish or the English, than all of the cultural things. Um, you were talking about learning Spanish. I was just with Suzanne today, and we were sitting on the ferry, get, getting ready, the waiting area over there, to, to come across the ferry over to you know, Vancouver Island. And suddenly there was a huge group of Japanese tourists, a whole Japanese tourist group, and they were speaking fluent Japanese to each other, and Suzanne was going, I don't get it, I don't, I don't get a, 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 any of it, it felt like I could understand, it was just like, da, 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 da. There, was, there was no comprehension, and then Suzanne said, why did we do this, commenting on basically the whole earth, like why do we have separate languages? It's bizarre to have separate languages. It's absolutely bizarre to have separate languages. Where did this start? Do you think God was like, okay, you're going to make it difficult for the community here. Let's come up some Japanese over here, some Chinese, some Spanish. You know, it's, it's a bizarre world. And you have to start to recognize it first as such. You know, you know, if the whole world is based on a reflection of separation, then you have to start to finally say, with some humbleness, hmm, oops, there's got to be an oops moment, somewhere. I mean, you know, if it's a mistaken uh, learning goal, and we're not achieving constant happiness and peace, then we actually have to reach the point where we, we stop. We just say, that's it. I'm going in the other direction. I may not even know how I'm going to make it, in that other direction, but I'm going for heaven. I'm going for nirvana. I'm going for true, lasting peace. I'm going for real love. Romantic love, okay. You've got your ups and you've got your downs, but I'm going to go for real love. I want to go for that real experience. And what I'm just saying is, again, I started off by saying, I just have not had a bad day for years and years. I can't even remember the last time I had a bad day. It's gone from memory. Jesus says in the Course of Miracles, the Holy Spirit needs happy learners. And when you become a happy learner, we'll say, when you learn the curriculum of forgiveness, it, it just becomes who you are. It, it is who you are. You don't go to make it back to heaven and tell war stories. Oh my God, I told you. 875 times, and you've got to be 912. You know, there's, it's not like a 12 step group where you compare and contrast, you know, your horror stories. Heaven is not like that. It's just a state of pure joy that has no opposite. So, it's, that's why we're here today. That's, that's the kind of questions we raise. I've actually, when people have asked me that in, when I'm in Spain or South America, or Colombia, or Venezuela, or Argentina, or whatever. And I'm eating with people, I'm having fun with them, and I'm laughing with them, and everything. And then sometimes somebody will actually raise the question, when are you going to learn Spanish, baby? Or, you need to learn Spanish, or something like that. And I say, oh heavens, I'm not learning English. Please. Uh, I'm for the silence. The peace that passes the understanding of the world. The Holy Spirit is just using these English words for a little flip of time before I unlearn them too. Uh, I'm going in the other direction. I'm not interested in learning any new languages. You'll talk to me about new words. I'm really not interested in new words. I've had enough vocabularies. In the years of university, it's like enough. Let's reverse it. So I'm going for a little bit of spiritual Alzheimer's. You know, let's, let's crank it up. When people talk to me about Alzheimer's, I go, wonder. Uh, my grandmother, Lillian, was, was diagnosed with dementia. And I used to go and visit her in the nursing home. And I would walk into the nursing home. I remember one time I walked into the nursing home and I'm looking and it was like, is this like a dream or whatever? I was looking around and I couldn't see anything. People. They were all, I like, looked around, but where are all the old people? So I go through the halls and corridors to visit her, and I can't find any. What is this? In the back, the invasion of the body snatchers or something? You no, know, where are all the people? They were all in the cafeteria singing. And my grandmother Lillian was leading the charge in her 90s, singing all these old hymns that she loved that were in her heart. 
She was diagnosed with dementia. She couldn't even remember who she had lunch with. But she could, I'd start her off, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, and boom, the whole 23rd Psalm would come out. She couldn't remember who she had lunch with. But she could zoom through the 23rd Psalm, you know. She could zoom through all these great, glorious hymns to God, just praising God and thanking God. And she couldn't remember what she did in the morning. And she would say, oh, Dave, my memory's leaving me. I'd say, yeah, it looks like a pretty good thing. She said, I can't remember certain things. I said, you seem to remember what you need to remember. And you seem to be very happy. In fact, the doctors, the, the nurses, the, the assistants, the attendants, one time when um, She'd only been in the nursing home for a while, and I had heard in some nursing homes they try to tell these people with dementia, you're so and so, they give them their birth name, you're, you're living in such and such a city, this and this. I went to the staff after like several weeks and I said, can you do me a favor? And they said, what is it? And I said, don't orient Lily, my grandmother, back into time and space. And they said, oh, we wouldn't dream of doing that. She is our teacher. This world is backwards and upside down. This world is meant about denying the present moment, and denying eternity. And all of time and memory used for the ego is used for that denial. And she was like, in her, in her, she lived to be 99 years old. And she just became more and more drifting into this state of happiness where the Spirit could sing through her and laugh through her. 